Welcome back to the final episode of an incredibly oversimplified and abridged history of musical theater, episode 6, the 2000s to the present day. So, back to where we left off with the seven eras of Disney. These last two stages took place within the 21st century. The sixth stage, Disney post-Renaissance, was not a particularly great era for Disney, as many of their animated films received little success. Because of this, Disney decided to make some changes by foregoing the use of 2D animation and hiring John Lasseter to supervise all animations moving forward. He also purchased Pixar in 2006. The final and seventh era was named the Revival Era, which we're currently in. This period refers to Disney Animation Studios' return to making successful films. During this era, Jennifer Lee took over as Chief Creative Officer in 2018. She was also the first woman to hold this position. She went on to co-direct and write the screenplays for Frozen and Frozen 2, both major successes. Since then, Disney has continued making leaps and bounds with storylines and CGI effects to up their storytelling game. And that's what you missed on Disney. Now, as we entered into the 2000s, we started seeing a lot of new trends form in the musical theater world. One of these trends was the jukebox musical. This style of show would surround a plot with a collection of pre-existing hit songs. Variations of this type of show had been done since the 18th century, with the Beggar's Opera being recognized as the first jukebox musical. But it wasn't until the musical Buddy, the Buddy Holly story, in 1989, that the jukebox formula was given any credibility. The 2000s brought on a surge of jukebox shows, including We'll Rock You, based on the music of Queen, and Jersey Boys, based on the music of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Today's more popular jukebox musicals are Mamma Mia, based on the music of ABBA, and most recently Jagged Little Pill, featuring the music of Alanis Morissette. Another trend was the return to spectacle. This was seen in shows such as Lord of the Rings and Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Even with the spectacle element though, these productions generally lost money. Almost doing the exact opposite, a trend of smaller shows began making success off-Broadway. Some even began running without intermissions because they were so short, like Fun Home. Productions also began experimenting with immersing the audience into the live productions, such as Once on this Island, where the actors parade through the aisles surrounding the stage. TV started to get in on the new trend as well. Television networks NBC and Fox began producing live musical broadcasts. NBC produced Peter Pan, The Sound of Music, and Hairspray, while Fox produced Grease and Rent. New reality TV shows centered around finding a new musical star also began airing, such as The Search for Elle Woods, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria, and Over the Rainbow. We also started seeing TV shows incorporating a staple musical episode where the characters burst into song or mixed a musical theme into its episode plot. The live-action film musical also became extremely popular, starting with Moulin Rouge and leading to hits such as Chicago, Phantom of the Opera, and less traditional musical theater shows such as Pitch Perfect and La La Land. In turn, as we moved into the later 20th century, more movies began being adapted for the stage, such as Moulin Rouge, Mean Girls, and Miss Doubtfire. We must also mention a new partnership that emerged in the 21st century by the name of Pasek and Paul. Benj Pasek and Justin Paul met at the University of Michigan in 2006 when they were freshmen. They began writing songs together, starting with Edges, a song cycle that with the help of the internet population began to be produced worldwide. Later, they wrote music and lyrics for Dogfight and Dear Evan Hansen. They've also written for film and TV, including songs for La La Land and The Greatest Showman. <laughs> and to the musical theater stage, we introduce hip hop. This new musical sound uses the style of DJing to manipulate and create digital beats and effects. It uses rapping, which involves delivering voice or song in a specific rhythm, usually over a beat, and can also include elements such as street dancing and beatboxing. Hip-hop musicals take influence from modern melodies and cultural references and attitudes. An example of the hip-hop musical is In the Heights or Hamilton, created by our friend here, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who helped to bring hip-hop center stage and also wrote and starred in both of these shows. Along with the revival, golden age, hip-hop, jukebox, and traditional musical shows, we now must add the indie approach. This style references the production of new, original shows, usually with no stars or big names attached to it, and the reimagining of unique stories. Hades Town, which can be categorized as an indie musical, saw great success with reimagining the Greek story of Orpheus and Eurydice, 
by adapting it for today's audiences to enjoy by incorporating modern costumes, music, and stylized movement. Well, <laughs> we're all caught up to the present day. So what does musical theater look like now? For most of us, it's through a screen. But musical theater has proven over the years to change and adapt with the needs of the times. 2020 is no different, as we see more modes of accessible entertainment pop up. We've seen Andrew Lloyd Webber's series, The Show Must Go On, bring us full-length productions available on YouTube for 48 hours. And on July 3rd, Disney Plus released Hamilton. And there's a whole platform called Broadway HD with recordings of productions. Virtual concerts, performances, and reimagined musical events are happening worldwide. Live theater may be postponed for now, but we are finding new ways to once again create and share art. Thank you for tuning in to an incredibly oversimplified and abridged history of musical theater. We hope you've enjoyed this mini-series, and we hope it inspires you to keep learning about musical theater history. Nick and Courtney, signing off.